What's up everyone, Art at Patience Metal Fab, and I wanted to take a moment to put together a video today on a truck that you might have seen in the background of a lot of our other videos. It's this Sonoma, and you might have seen a different variation. I know I did when it first came in. This used to be a red cab, a red bed, and the original frame, and really none of that is left over. Gary, what do we have here? Certainly not the original car that I remember. No, it started life as a mid, late 90s Sonoma, um, somebody's grandpa's truck, and they wanted to build it. Chassis was rotten, so they wanted to do the chassis on it. As we got into the cab, it was pretty clear that the amount of money it was gonna take to fix the rust on the cab was not gonna be worth spending. So they went out, found a donor cab, bed, so you're right. I mean, we pretty much have none of the components of the original truck here, but you know, the idea is still there for them. You can see a little bit of the custom frame poking out right here, but why don't we get the cab up and then we can start from the front, go to the back and break this thing down. brought in a truck, took a bunch of measurements. We knew we wanted to build a chassis, so it was all CAD designed. Drew it up in Bentec, um, cut it all on the Dragon, and uh, it really, you know, kind of used it to showcase what it is that we're capable of with that machine. And we'll focus a lot of this episode on the chassis itself, but let's start with the stuff strapped to it. So what do we have for engine and trans here? LQ9, six liter, nice, reliable, uh, relatively inexpensive power plant. Um, got the Air 500, uh, five speed behind it. Got a fab out adapter housing to put the two together. Now the suspension up front is all upgraded, but that's not custom from us. What is this kit from? No, so in this case, we wanted something that was aimed a little more at affordability versus completely designing a front end from scratch. So Speedway has this G comp system that works really well. Uh, it's what I would consider a good solid mid range front suspension works very well for something that's going to be streeted, maybe some autocross, some light pro touring type driving. Gives you a coilover, gives you a little bit of an updated version of like a Mustang 2 front with some of the adjustability, but a lot less of the cost of going with like a full on SLA front end on this. We're going to move it on back. What do we got here? Uh, not the stock rear end, looks a little beefier. Yep, pretty standard issue, triangulated four link. Uh, I got a Ford 88 in here narrowed it up to the width that we actually were looking for on this thing. Ran with a basic helix, uh, triangulated four link system, and you can't see the coilovers right now because they're not in it, but there will be a conventional set of upper lower eyelet coilovers, two way adjustable, something like a QA1 or a Viking. And then in the back back, we've got the radium fuel cell right here. It's empty at the moment, but uh, what size is this? So this is a 22 gallon cell by radium. Yes, it is empty because for the sake of building, we don't want all the guts in it. The bladder is really where the cost is to these things. It's also what expires. So if you have a build that might take you, say, three, four years to get done, you better off buying it this way. Don't get the bladder yet because the bladder's got an expiration date on it. I'm glad we took a minute to highlight some of the bigger components, but what I really wanted to get to was the custom chassis itself. Now, how long did this build take us to get to this point? So the chassis itself actually only took us about two and a half weeks, start to finish. Um, and again, that speaks to the digital design capabilities of it. And is that where we start? I mean, when a truck like this comes in, or I should say a different truck, the red bed cab and a totally stock frame, when that comes in, what are the first steps that we have to do? Measuring, you can do it one of two ways. You can do it the old school way, take it apart, manually measure everything, or we can scan, 3D scan it, bring it over into uh, a surfacing software and be able to actually take measurements off of it. And then that gives us something to impose the chassis that we've designed back into to make sure it fits. Kind of depends on the scope of the build. If it's something that has to fit a lot of very specific uh, features to a factory floorboard or something, we may get it scanned and work backward from there. Trucks are relatively easy. I mean, there's not a lot going on underneath there. The body mounts are generally big, wide open spaces. So in this case, it was just a series of measurements. Got the thing fixtured up on the frame table and then moved them all over into Bentec. Did all the design work there. 
and it's especially easy for us because this business started out as a mini truck fabrication business, and that's kind of where the, the heart of PMF is. Yeah, it sure did, which makes it funny to build a nice old S10 like this too, you know, it kind of brings us back to our roots a little bit. Well, we started front to back, so why don't we go back to front, but before that, let's address the small elephant in the room, which is why is this thing so rusty? I mean, last time I saw it, it looked a lot better than this. Yeah, so you remember that part I mentioned about a donor car? Well, that took them a few weeks to find, and in Minnesota, if something has to go outside for a little bit, even if it's just over the course of the day, the humidity gets to it, and this is what you get. So, not a, not a big deal. Um, this thing's getting sandblasted and powder coated anyway, but yeah, it definitely makes it a little less uh, pretty for the video. Walk through some of the features on the chassis, right? Okay, obviously these, these, you know, this is all your mounting points. Pretty straightforward, but you know, in typical fashion, A, we like to give some adjustability because no matter how much you measure and try to get it perfect, for when you go to put it back together, it's never gonna fit perfectly. You need that adjustability. So you notice the slots in it instead of just holes. But you know, again, they got a little flash, little contour, everything's TIG welded. You know, same thing with our upper uh, coilover mounts. Again, you know, you can get away with just some brackets, but when you got the ability, why not make it look nice? Well, one point that we really kind of had proud on this build in particular was the way we actually built out the notches. We got to play with our dragon a little bit for the first time using some rectangle tube and get it to actually cut out all these specific angles. So this thing actually just went together on the frame table. I mean, just snap, click together, plate, I mean the notch came out perfect, so shout out to Bentec for being able to do what they say that machine can actually do. Obviously this rear end doesn't belong here, which means all of these link arms don't either. I assume this is an aftermarket kit that we kind of integrated and made work? Yeah, it's a universal kit by Helix. And you know, when it comes to any time you do a solid rear axle car, you've got multiple options between whether you want to do a four link triangulated, four link parallel with a pan hard, you can do a watts link, you can do a three link with a torque arm. I mean, there's so many different options. This is kind of your most basic setup. It's just a tr traditional triangulated four link. Allows us to accomplish both um, front to rear support as well as lateral support for the rear end with four bars instead of five or a pan hard bar. So this is typically what we default to in something like this. If this was gonna be more of a, maybe an autocross truck or go do some more track action, you might see something like a Watts link in here, which is what we like to go to more often for performance and adjustability. But for the end customer that's gonna use this particular truck, most of the time it's gonna live on the street and he doesn't wanna to have to get under here and think about adjustments or adjustability. So this is built to just work at the ride height it's at and just function. Speaking of our Bentec Dragon, one of the coolest things that I filmed while Max was working on this is these cutouts in the frame. What exactly are those for? Uh, it's for exhaust. One thing you run into when you've got a big beefy frame like this, especially when it's tucked up tight underneath a truck, is that you've got nowhere for exhaust to go. Guys wind up with the exhaust hanging way down below the frame. It winds up getting beat up, cracked, flattened out, smashed, we've all seen it. So what we like to do is actually make a pass through in the cross member to allow for the exhaust to run through. You can house a muffler in this area, you can put a muffler out back, depending on kind of how you want to route your exhaust. But this was another really fun one. Again, this gave us an opportunity to really kind of flex the muscles of the Bentec software and the Dragon as a tool. And for these guys, most of them don't have extensive CAD training at all to be able to design and have it cut out things like this and just go together the way it did. It, it works phenomenally well. Making our way up to the front, I see a lot of cool things here. These gussets right here, the knuckle and the whole suspension area. And I'm wondering how this all is integrated in because it's a G-Comp front suspension kit and obviously our custom uh, chassis. So how did we put this all together? Yep, so when you get the G-Comp, it comes fully welded. They've got the two two by three tubes running forward to back on either side to integrate into the chassis. In this case, we tied them in right at the high point of it. We got a nice big gusset plate underneath the cross member here. And then that allowed us to really get the up sweep. We got a lot of tire clearance if he wants to run a bigger wheel in the front of this. And the big thing here was getting it to fit underneath the actual floorboard of the S10 and not wind up having to do additional cutting work on the floor. We already got to do enough for the firewall with this big thing going in. We don't want to have to cut the floor up too. The one thing you might notice about this G-Comp is it does not look like a traditional Mustang two knuckle in there. That's one of the nice things about this. That actually runs a C6 Corvette 
spindle. So that means any of the C6 brakes, the standard unit hub, all bolt right onto it. You mentioned the firewall, and I think that's the next big step in this, right? I know DJ was cutting into this thing, and the cab is ready to kind of start getting the chassis over here, get it put on. What are the next steps from here? Well, a little bit more cutting and trimming. Um, one thing we did do on that chassis is we designed the transmission mount to allow that motor to be moved forward and back. And after doing some initial cutting and being a little more intrusive into the cab than we wanted to be, we're gonna actually flip those motor mounts around and we're gonna move the motor slightly forward in the chassis. Then we're gonna come back, revisit the firewall. But typical, um, for sure tunnel, drive shaft, as soon as you stuff a motor that high up into anything, especially that motor, you're not gonna be able to fit it onto something that you know was intended for the motor to be considerably lower on. So, tranny tunnel, we'll cut for the drive shaft, and then we'll come in, we'll start to put it all back together, make a nice tunnel for it. Probably leave a, um, a bell housing access point so that they're actually able to get to bell housing bolts by pulling an access panel out inside if they want, make it a little bit easier to service. Now, the one question that I had is, why would a customer bring in a car or a truck like he did and then have us make a fully custom chassis versus like an off the shelf roaster shop? Yep. So there's quite a few options out there. If uh, somebody's looking for something that's just gonna drop on and already powder coated, ready to go, put their car on it and drive down the street, that's a great option. In fact, we've spec'd out a few Roadster Shop chassis, we've done Schwartz chassis on cars. A lot of times that works for the application. In this case, nobody made an S10 chassis. You wanna build something oddball, you wanna build a 62 Thunderbird, guess what, Roadster Shop doesn't make a chassis for that. Cost to have them build you one by the time it's all said and done, I mean, you can be upwards of 50 grand into a custom chassis with them. We can beat that price. We are able to do it on site here. Car doesn't have to ship out. We've got the laser scanning, the CAD design capabilities. So it kind of just depends on the application. Some time later. Looks like DJ was able to set the cab of the truck down on the chassis. So I want to pop out here and give you an idea of what it's all going to look like and also show you how that transmission fits in here. You can see he did a really good job of cutting it out to contour. But there is plenty of work to be done to actually close that up. Same thing in the front. You can't see how much of the firewall needs to be built up. But as you guys saw before, when the cab was up, there is quite a lot of work to do. Now that's gonna take us probably about a week and a half to two to accomplish the whole thing. And then eventually the owner's gonna be picking this up and doing some work of his own. It may or may not come back around to our shop before it's all said and done. Obviously there's a lot yet left to do and it has to go out to paint body eventually. So I think once this is show ready, we'll get it into our shop to do maybe another build breakdown on the things that we accomplished plus the things that the owner has done in that time. So I'm really hoping you guys enjoyed this build breakdown. If you did, subscribe to the page, like this video. We've got plenty of other awesome projects coming through the shop. A good example is this Nova right here. And all those are gonna be potential projects that'll end up on our YouTube channel. So please follow along. We'll see you in the next one.